Today's video is going up around one year after my first video, and this is also my 100th video. 100 videos in one year, 7.5k subscribers, and 1.15 million views. It's been an amazing journey that I look forward to continuing. I'm mentioning all of this because this being an MBA channel, I figured for my 100th video I should talk about not a player or a team or anything like that. Instead, let's talk about the NBA as a whole, or more specifically, the origin of the NBA logo. Now, who is the logo? Well, Jerry West, a point guard of the Lakers in the 60s and 70s, is the unspoken NBA logo. In his 14 seasons in the NBA, Jerry West was an all-star every single year of his career. He won a championship, went to the finals eight times, won an MVP, and was the only player to ever win a finals MVP in a losing effort. Jerry scored 25,000 points in his career, and he's on the list of the 50 greatest players of all time. West is one of the best players in NBA history, and he was a top 5 player in the league in its early years. The origin of the logo. The logo was created in 1971 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the league. At the time, the NBA was in fierce competition with the ABA, the American Basketball Association, the league that had players such as Artis Gilmore, George Gervin, and Julius Irving. Back then, professional basketball wasn't owned by one league. So the NBA commissioner at the time, J. Walter Kennedy, wanted to create some separation between the NBA and ABA, making the NBA the go-to league for professional basketball. Neither league really had an official logo, nothing too recognizable anyways, so Commissioner Kennedy, who understood the value of branding, wanted to give the NBA an official logo to make the NBA more recognizable as a brand. Now you might think that something as simple as a logo isn't that big of a deal, but consider this. How often do you subscribe to a YouTube channel that doesn't have a profile picture? Just a white letter with a colored background. Even if the channel has a great video, a brand makes it look reliable and professional. Even if your logo is a rusty bucket in a picture frame, it's still better than nothing. So Commissioner Kennedy went to Alan Siegel of Siegel Plus Gale to develop an easy to market logo. Alan went for a simplistic design and looked through photos of the league's top players to try and create a design that would capture the essence of the game. He looked at photos of players like Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Elgin Baylor, Oscar Robertson, and of course, Jerry West. And it was a photo of Mr. Clutch, as Jerry was called, that Allen thought captured the essence of the game. Allen took this photo and created a silhouette of Jerry. It was not a direct trace of the silhouette, which is easy to tell when you put the photo and logo side by side. For example, towards the bottom you can see both of Jerry's feet, which is not the case with the logo, and his shorts on his left are below the ball in the photo, but above in the silhouette. But nevertheless, you can tell that the logo is Jerry. Alan Siegel himself says that it is. But the NBA is reluctant to say that the logo is Jerry West. They just say that the logo is an interpretation of NBA players as a whole, and they do this because if the league flat out said that Jerry was the logo, the league would have to pay him a cut every time the logo is used, which would make West a very rich man. Or a way richer man. Even if the NBA had to give West only 1% of the money, it would be in the millions. Over the past six years, the NBA has earned around $3.6 billion each year. Let's say that 20% of that revenue is clothing and branding that has the NBA logo on it, which is actually probably a conservative estimate. That's $720 million a year that the logo earns. So if West earned 1% of that, he'd be making $7.2 million a year. That's just 1%. Realistically, selling a person's likeness the person would get at least 20 to 30 percent of the cut, minimum. If Jerry wanted, he could sue the NBA and make bank, but he doesn't. Wes is a very humble man and he does not care about the money. He does, however, wish the NBA would change the logo, mostly so he can stop being asked about it, and because, well, that leads to the last part of this video. Who the logo should be. 
Wes believes that the NBA logo should be Michael Jordan. The man who is commonly considered to be the GOAT is a pretty fair pick. Looking at Jordan's case, we all know his resume. But for those of you living under a boulder, not a rock, MJ, for his career, has won six championships in six attempts, five MVPs, one Defensive Player of the Year, was a 14-time All-Star, and, and he has scored the fourth most points in NBA history, 32,292. And he is considered by many to be the greatest player of all time, and he, of all people, captures the essence of the game. He's a great pick to be the next NBA logo, but there are other players who are good for the picking. First of all, going back 46 years, if you're trying to choose a silhouette of the essence of the game, as Siegel was at the time, you would think that you would choose a winning player to be the logo. As good of a player as Jerry West was, he was 1 for 8 in the finals. And there was a man that was fairly responsible for that record, Bill Russell. The 11-time NBA champion beat up on West's Lakers year after year after year for those 11 rings. So if you're choosing between a player that is constantly winning versus a player that is constantly losing, I think the choice for the essence of the game would pretty clearly be for the winning player. Here's a photo right here that I think would look good for a silhouette. I even made a logo of my own in Photoshop out of this photo. You can tell that I used to want to be a graphic designer and that there is a reason that I decided not to pursue that as my major. It's alright, I guess. Also, why would the league portray a guard in the logo? At the time, the NBA was dominated by the big man. Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain were dominating the league at this time. The Bucks recently drafted a center called Lou Alcindor, who would become Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who was averaging 35 and 16 the season that the logo was made. The NBA was a big man's league at the time. Russell was a big who was winning rings like it was nothing. Back then, the essence of the game was a big man posting up or grabbing a rebound or blocking a shot, not a guard dribbling the ball. As you can see from Jerry's highlights, ball handling wasn't exactly polished in the NBA in the 60s and 70s, so it wasn't a huge part of the game. You also could argue that Wilt Chamberlain deserved a spot. Wilt the Stilt, who had a 100-point game in his career, who by 1971 was at the latter stages of an amazing NBA career, having played 13 seasons at that point. So even at the time, choosing Jerry West as the silhouette to capture the essence of the game was questionable, even in 1971. For more modern examples, Kobe Bryant, a five-time champion, an MVP and an 18-time All-Star is another top-tier player in NBA history who deserves to have his name in the conversation. His ex-partner, Shaquille O'Neal, could have been a great pick. His dominance on the game was absolutely legendary, winning four championships and two MVPs, and being single-handedly the most physically dominant player in NBA history. If you want your league to be represented by winning and dominance, then Shaq is your man. Or maybe you would want to have your league represented by winning, professionalism, and loyalty. If that's the case, then your guy is Tim Duncan, a five-time champion, two-time MVP, and 15-time All-Star. A pretty good guy to have represent your league. And I do think that LeBron has a great case as well, but I believe that the logo should go to the player that is retired. The reality is the NBA will likely not change the logo for a very long time. If the NBA made a player such as Kobe or MJ the logo, I wouldn't guess that they would be as happy to have their likeness being sold without making a profit. The NBA really is lucky that Jerry West doesn't care about the fact that he's not making money off of the logo, because he very easily could. But I'd love to see it happen, because as good as a player West is, he is far from the most deserving candidate. A skinny guard who played in the 60s is no longer what I think of when I think of the NBA. Well, actually, it's never what I thought of. So it certainly isn't who fans think of now, even if you were a fan all the way back then. I think it would also be cool if the NBA changed the logo every decade or so to keep up with the trend of the league. A lot of NBA teams do this every few years, changing their logos. Imagine after Jordan retired, MJ became the logo, while Kobe was dominating. Then Kobe retired, Kobe became the logo while LeBron was the top player of the league as he is now, and so on and so on. The logo could almost become a career achievement. 
like one last accomplishment to end a legendary career. Imagine reading a career resume of MJ that said six championships, five MVPs, and a logo. Would be really cool. Could be a point of pride for players, something that players could fight to accomplish, a motivator you could say. And just like the NBA has vintage nights where, let's say, the 2016 Lakers wear a 1960s Lakers style jersey, the NBA could sell vintage logo clothes and things like that. An interesting idea that I would like to see come to reality. Thanks to everyone who's been with me on this 100 video journey. I look forward to the next 100 and if this is the first video of mine that you are seeing, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this and cue the outro music.